Swithin Street, just another indication of how popular St Swithin truly was. We're here at St Swithin upon Kingsgate, a church that is dedicated to St Swithin, just one of the many here in this area. Once someone was recognised as a saint, whether by popular acclamation or by papal sanction, their bodies and possessions took on a new significance and power for believers. These objects, or relics, became centres of veneration and worship, and many went on pilgrimages to visit them. In the first few centuries after Christ, devotion to these relics was minor and almost non-existent, but as Christianity spread outwards from the large cities to the pagan peoples in the rural areas who did not understand the theology of the new religion in such depth, a desire developed for a more obvious display of divine power. This desire was satisfied in the idea of relics, which were seen to have great power and overflowed into miracles such as healing. This led to cults growing up around the remains and possessions of those viewed as saints. In the fourth century AD, the popularity of these cults suddenly exploded, with hundreds of people being recognised as saints by the common people. Theologians of the time, such as the great Saint Augustine of Hippo, wholeheartedly accepted these cults and to, and to support them quoted scriptures such as Acts 19 verses 11 and 12, in which Luke, the historian of the early church, records that God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. By the central Middle Ages, the cult of relics was widespread throughout Christendom, and was an integral part of the way people worshipped. These relics were highly valued objects, and so they were often fought over, traded, and stolen. Stealing relics was particularly common in this period, and it was through this that most cults came to be widespread. To the modern mind, this seems like outright theft, and we expect that it was widely condemned by such a religious culture. But actually, it was universally agreed that if you succeeded in stealing a relic and didn't get caught, then it was the will of God, and you were guilt-free. Such an act was therefore known as furta sacra, sacred theft. In order to reinforce the divine sanction these thefts claimed, it was common for them to be justified after the event with stories of the saints appearing to pious followers and commanding them to remove their remains from the current location, which were usually described as falling into ruin and decay, and therefore unworthy to house their relics. One example of this is the account of the French historian Einhard, as he writes of how he stole the relics of Saint Marcellinus and Peter. In his account, he tells how the saints repeatedly appeared to his servant, commanding him to remove the saints' bodies to a new location they had chosen. Well, in the 1100s, one of the monks from uh, St. Swithin's Priory uh, went across the North Sea, taking with him the arm bone of St. Swithin. And there, in Stavanger, he founded the first cathedral. And this holy relic, the arm bone of St. Swithin, was installed up by the high altar. Mind you, his head had already gone to Canterbury uh, in the year 1000, taken by Bishop Arthedge. So, I think there wasn't an awful lot left behind at Winchester. The dispersal of relics through theft and deliberate effort was motivated by the power attributed to them. In order to understand this, we must look at the role miracles had in the cult of medieval saints. Miracles were a central aspect of medieval Christian culture. In the Augustinian theology that was predominant at the time, there could be no Christian society without the miraculous. This was fulfilled through the miracles of the saints, whose abundant merit overflowed into healings of the blind, the deaf and the lame, and even cases of the dead being raised. People prayed for miracles, to help with their everyday lives as well. There is even one story of a young girl who prayed to St Thomas Becket after she had lost some cheese 
and it was miraculously revealed to her where it was. Miracles attributed to saints were recorded, often by monks, and placed in a book near to the shrine. These miracle collections were significant in promoting the culture of the saint and proving the power of their remains. St. Swithin's miracles were recorded by a monk of the Old Minster named Lanfred. This was common practice in medieval England. Thomas Becket's miracles were recorded by the monks William and Benedict, and Thomas of Monmouth, another monk, recorded the miracles of St. William of Norwich. Lanfred documents many miracles of St. Swithin. Here's one of them, concerning the prior. Similarly, a prior of the monastery of Abingdon was rendered blind for a period of 15 years. While he was being tormented by this extreme blindness, he went through a good many medicines. And once his head was cauterized with 12 separate sea rings, which of course did him no good, but a great deal of harm. Having at that point heard of the great and many miracles which the merciful creator of things had generously deigned to offer to ailing men through his servant, he came barefoot to Winchester and went up to the body of the holy bishop offering insistent prayers. He arrived there and kept vigil there that same night. And when the next day's dawn was breaking, he was found worthy to see the daylight with his own eyes, and returning home in sound health, he took care to glorify the omnipotent Lord. Having looked at how St. Swithin fits into the context of medieval saints, we have understood something of the important role saints played in medieval society. We will now briefly examine whether there is anything comparable to this in today's culture, and say if saints, like Swithin, still have a role to play. But his relevance today is because it's a kind of exciting story, and everybody wants to come and have a little piece of it. We don't have saints as such today. We have people like, you know, David Beckham, Mother Teresa. Um, one time it was Britney Spears. <laughs> um, and everybody wants the cult of celebrity. They want to be near the famous, which is why these pop stars with very little go on are so famous. And St. Swithin, although there was very little known about him, and some people say this is why he was chosen to be the saint, because they could say anything about him, so little was known. Uh, they wanted a little piece of the action. Although, in today's culture, saints no longer have such a prominent role, it is clear that they still have a huge importance for historical study, and even have interesting parallels with the modern phenomena of celebrities and the followings they acquire. The cult of St. Swithin does not exist today in the form it had in the medieval period, but it remains an important feature in the history and culture of Winchester. <laughs>